Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, on Wednesday afternoon, a special Hawaiian Electric show today uh, on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And we have news news from Hawaiian Electric through Peter Rosek. He's the spokesman for Hawaiian Electric. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thank you very much, Jay. It's good to be in your new studio, however remotely that happens. But, uh, <laughs> glad to be here and uh, glad to talk about various things that are going on with us in the new year. Yeah. Well, it's the beginning of a new year. Lots of changes, lots of things happening. I wonder if we could, uh, you know, touch on some of them. Um, you know, for example, uh, you have a new CEO at uh, Hawaiian Electric. That's very important. Can you talk about that? Sure. Uh, the CEO has been named, Scott Sue. Uh, he hasn't officially uh, taken uh, office. So, you know, the crown uh, hasn't been put on his head just yet. But uh, it's a transition period with Alan Oshima, who's been our uh, very excellent president for the last five years through some uh, what the Queen of England would call bumpy times, I suppose. And uh, Scott's going to be taken over. Scott's been with the company uh, his entire career. Alan was with the company for five years after a very long uh, you know, career as a, a utility attorney and, and other kinds of things. But Scott's been with the company uh, virtually since he got out of uh, college. He went to uh, Kamehameha Schools. He went to Stanford, a little college on the, on the West Coast, <laughs> and got, a, got a, an engineering degree there and came back to Hawaii. And he's worked in perhaps four, five, six, I'd have to count them up, different departments at Hawaiian Electric. He's worked most recently as the vice president, senior vice president for public affairs, but he has been, um, he's been in the environmental department. He's been uh, in the power supply. He's very well known to the people in the company. And he, he as he says, he grew up in the company. And, um, it, you know, I can say, if you notice in the history, 100 and, almost 130 years, uh, there have been two uh, Asian Americans uh, who have been president of the company. Alan Oshima was the first, and Scott Sue is the second. There have been some other locally born folks uh, going back uh, over the years. But so, you know, this is Hawaiian Electric, and it really is uh, its a company of local values, and the people who are in charge of it have, I think, those local values. I've only lived in Hawaii about 48 years or so, so uh, I'm still, you know, <laughs> just a young off pup. the boat, <laughs> off the boat. But, you know, I've tried to live those values as well, and I think they're very important. Uh, we are of this community, uh, of nowhere else. Uh, nobody, everybody who works for Hawaiian Electric lives on these islands. Uh, we all work here, or, you know, so we're, we're supplying our friends and our neighbors and our families with an essential service. And so I think that uh, that local feeling is going to continue as we move into a very, but a very different kind of, of uh, energy environment. The you know, utility industry is changing across the United States and certainly here as well. And uh, we're already starting to see some, well, we've been seeing those changes and we're gonna see them, I think, more and more quickly uh, coming into the future. So it's a pretty exciting time and we're all looking forward to Scott's official uh, coronation. And, uh, but he's already out in the, in the field talking to various departments and um, talking to people in the community uh, where he's very well known as a longtime Hawaiian electric guy. So we're very, very pleased. I mean, he's my boss's boss. So I've been reporting indirectly to him for the last uh, four or five years and, and worked with him longer than that. And I think we're all very pleased by this, uh, this decision and it's a great one. Yeah, well, one thing that strikes me is I think it's really important to keep uh, Hawaii Hawaiian uh, to keep Hawaiian Electric uh, Hawaiian, to keep the special, you know, local local flavor to the company and the state. We have our own special brand, our own special way of doing things, our own special aloha. And I think uh, in appointing Scott Sue as the CEO 
Hawaiian Electric has retained that. Um, rather than somebody from somewhere else, I think it's great to have a local CEO. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think there's nothing wrong with people coming from the mainland, uh, but since I did myself at one point, but uh, I think, you know, this is a pretty unique service. There is, uh, it's a service that every single person in these islands depends on. Uh, it's a service that, uh, you know, we really can't imagine life without, and it's got to be uh, reliable. It's got to be safe. Uh, it's got to be uh futuristic really. We're moving, as I said, into a whole new era uh, of, uh, of change that's continuing. Uh, we're going to see new kinds of renewable energy. We're going to see, uh, you know, a lot more attention paid to resilience as we see the climate change uh, effects. A lot of stuff going on. So we're, I think it's ideal when you can keep your local values and keep your local experience but you can learn from everybody else and you, you can teach everybody else. People come to Hawaii. I don't think most people realize that people come here or they call here or they look at what we're doing here in the electric sector because we are the vanguard in so many areas. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons I think that the utility was named utility of the year uh, by Utility Dive, which is an online publication, independent journalism. We didn't apply for that honor. We didn't uh, put our name in or tell them why we were wonderful. They, they sent us an email one day and said, by the way, you've been named Utility of the Year for 2019. So uh, there's clearly recognition. It sometimes happens, you know, there's more recognition outside the state than inside the state for some of our most innovative work. Uh, that's, you know, the East West Center feels that, the University of Hawaii often feels that. I think that's not an unusual feeling. Here at home, we we tend, you know, understandably to focus on, well, there's a problem here, or that my lights went out during that storm. Uh, on the mainland, they say, oh my God, look at that utility. There are 30% renewable energy. One in three family, single family homes on Oahu has solar on their roof. They're, they're experimenting with ways of load management and getting customer participation we haven't even dreamed of. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we certainly are not immune to criticism for some of the things we do at home and we're trying our best, but I think people in Hawaii ought to be justifiably proud of the utility that serves them and that really is looking out for their interests. You know, they're paying me to say that, but <laughs> well. it's, it's, the it's the truth. It's the truth. Uh, and and uh, I think if people saw some of the communications we get from other utilities, some of the expressions on the faces of other utility uh, presidents and other utility engineers when they see what we're doing here, uh, Solar uh, Smart Energy, uh, Smart Power, Electric Power Association, national organization, sent a team of uh, executives here uh, a month or two ago just to look at what we're doing. Uh, you don't hear about that too much, and that's okay. Uh, we're not, you know, we're not begging for for honors and, and adulation, but people should be aware of the fact that we're a very forward-looking and forward-seeking kind of place. Yeah, I'm willing to share. I'm, I'm willing to share. Yeah. I mean, Alan Oshima spoke at a tech for, tech force conference back in I think it was November. Um, it was very interesting because he was talking about this very same subject and talking about how uh, utilities and energy experts come from all over the country. They want to know what Hawaiian Electric is doing. And he right. shares willingly. He shares uh, the company shares its its uh, its challenges and its lessons with other utilities, which is very nice of it um, in terms of you know spreading the technology, spreading the knowledge. Um, and spreading the solutions that you've found over the years, especially particularly in renewable energy. Well, we've learned, you know, in fairness, we've learned a lot from, from mainland associations, National, uh, National Renewable Energy Laboratory and uh, EPRI, the Electric Power Research Institute and many others. We take as well as we give, but I mm -hmm. think it's very much in the, you know, sometimes people say, well, why, you know, why aren't you charging them? You know, if you're going to give them, you know, you've, you've gained, gained this experience. Well, there may be some role for that in the future, but essentially it's kind of a Hawaii way, you know, you share, uh, the, you, you share with a stranger, you share with the neighbor. And, uh, you know, we're, we're glad to make what we've done uh, available and for other people to adapt it because we adapt from others as well. So yeah. it's, it's a, it's part of, I think, what's 
spoke of before, and that's the Hawaiian flavor of the company. Yeah, Hawaiian Electric, uh, Hawaii's electric company, I always say. So meanwhile, yeah, we gave you an fair. award, you know, at our, at yeah, our Christmas I, I heard... function in December, and uh, Jim I... Kelly showed up and accepted the award for Hawaiian Electric for Alan Oshima at the time. And yeah, yeah. Uh, that we gave it to you for community service because we feel that you have touched and continue to engage with the community in, in so many ways uh, that you deserve to be among the recipients of the award we give every year. Well, and we appreciate that. Again, I don't think we, we applied for that one either. No. But, uh, you know, we, we are, we're glad to be recognized. So we don't do it chiefly to be recognized. But, of course, when you do something good, it's always nice to be recognized it's always nice to have people notice but we have our our people and their families give thousands of hours every year uh in volunteer work and uh you know we're going to be right now they're recruiting people to be out on the street with the cops with the hawaii police department next week or so in a safe driving effort we go into the the loi and help uh you know clean up the uh, some of the hay out in front of the loi, uh, and, and we we have a, a lot of of community activities plus charitable donations from the companies through the Hawaii uh, Electric Industries Charitable Foundation and through the uh, their own individual donations, which the company will often uh, match. And uh, you know, it's again something uh, we don't do to get get honors but we do it because we live here i mean we're all we are literally all part of this community well it works well uh, i want to talk about some of the news uh, that's been released lately uh sure. one of those things is a puna geothermal venture a lot of people thought that you know after the eruption it was it was going to be history but not it's coming back it's coming back this year can you talk about that sure uh, it's really great news and a good way to start this year as you say uh, after the May 2018, when the Kilauea volcano cut off the road and uh, ate up some of the buildings at Puna Geothermal Venture, I think a lot of people thought, well, they've been around for almost 30 years and kind of run their course, and that's the end of that. Uh, and the, unfortunately, what happened, uh, we had to use a lot more oil on the Big Island, which has always been a renewable energy leader. We had to burn more oil, and which raised the prices for uh, people on the Big Island. And uh, but Ormat, the owner of Puna Geothermal Venture, I think has been a very good corporate citizen. They kept their staff on salary, even though they weren't generating any income. And we don't we don't pay them a penny unless they send electricity to the grid. So the minute they shut down, we're not we're paying them nothing. But they kept their staff on on uh, they, they kept their staff employed and paid. They flew people by helicopter into the facility periodically to uh, do maintenance and upgrade it. And they've been very energetic in wanting to reopen. And so we've got a great deal. The, in all credit to the Public Utilities Commission. They said, well, you know, since we're going to have to kind of look at this anew, we'd like to see the people of the Big Island get a better price because most of the electricity coming from Puna Geothermal Venture was uh, under the old kind of contract, which we call the avoided cost of oil. So whatever oil was charging, whatever we had to pay for oil, we had to pay uh, to Puna Geothermal Venture for most of their, about 30 of megawatts of their production. Another eight megawatts was under a newer contract. And so the people on the Big Island, though, they have been a, the outstanding leader probably in the world in, in terms of the percentage of renewable energy on their grid, we're also paying some pretty steep prices and uh, much higher than they would have been, uh, they could have been under newer contracts. So the PUC and its wisdom said, you know, before we give you permission to uh, reopen that plant, to put in the transmission lines to replace what was lost, we'd like you to renegotiate that contract. And uh, that gave us the, the opening to go to, P, to PGV and say, you know, uh, we have a contract, but the the commission, which is our regulator, says we've got to renegotiate. And uh, they came to the table, uh, I, I assume, you know, maybe a little bit reluctantly, I don't know, but, you know, because they had a good contract, so that's good for them. And uh, came back to the table and we renegotiated a new contract. Uh, it does two things, basically. First of all, it gets us off the avoided price of oil. Uh, they're going to be paid a, a stable, steady amount, just like a, a new wind farm today. We don't pay by what the cost of oil is. We pay by what their costs 
plus a reasonable profit is. So some of the new wind farms that we are, I'm sorry, new solar farms that we've opened up lately, uh, they've been in the 10, 11, 12 cents uh, a kilowatt hour range. And uh, so we went back and renegotiated that. So starting in about 2022, when they've rebuilt and when they have expanded, the, uh, we're going to be paying them at a fixed rate. And uh, so the bills on the Big Island will go down about $7.50 a month in 2022, I believe. And in 2023, they should be down about $13 a month compared to today. Well, that's so that's fabulous. That's a, fabulous. That's a pretty good break. And the other thing they're doing is they're, they had been at 30 megawatts for many years. They added eight megawatts of production. Now they're going to add another eight megawatts. So they're going to be at 46 megawatts of production. And um, so that's a substantial increase for them and for the Big Island, which had already been uh, the best in the state in terms of, of you know, regular renewable energy capacity. So by 2023 or so, we think 70% on on average of their energy is going to be renewable and that's that's going to be a real a real breakthrough yeah. and it's going to help everybody and you know it's going to put more power into the system at a lower price so you know we've always heard that the farmers would like to farm if they could get less expensive electricity and other kinds of businesses may want to look at the big island and say well you know they're gonna their their electric rates are going to be lower they're land rates may be lower and there, there may be a place to do some business. So we think it's going to be a great advantage to the, the community of the Big Island and, uh, you know, pave the way for future uh, progress and get How do you cope with the possibility closer. of future eruptions? Uh, well, this is a great move. Yeah. This is great. We want yeah. to have diversified portfolio, but how do you, how right. do you cope with that? Yeah, you know, it, there's really you build into the the possibility i mean you you first of all from our point of view we always made sure that if we had if for whatever reason we lost a geothermal venture that there was enough other generation on the on the island so that the people would get the reliable service that they insisted on and they deserve because they're paying for it and uh, so even though pgv went out pretty suddenly in may 2018 uh, we had to buy more oil, we had to burn more oil, but we had the ability to keep the lights on across the Big Island. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got to always plan for contingencies. It is, uh, you know, inherently a risk of, of having a geothermal plant that it's going to be on a geologically active place and that it, this is a possibility. Yeah. So you, you just got to build that into the planning and uh, PGV certainly built it into their own own planning, but we always look at the the total picture. The PGV looks out for their plant. We look out for the Big Island, and we we've always had enough generation capacity. Uh, e even though you know it's tempting to say, well, we don't really need this old plant. We'll close it down. Uh, Shipman and some of the older older facilities there, but we always were ready. And the other thing, of course, is you try to diversify further. Uh, Hu Honua is in a long time coming, but uh, that's a, a plant that's going to burn uh, uh, biomass. Yeah. And we're, we're not 100% certain, but we're hopeful that it comes online. So that there again, we have a little, we have some buffer. And uh, you can obviously not plan for every earthquake or plan for every, every eruption, but you have to plan generically so that whatever the worst case is, you are, uh, you're prepared to respond to that. That's yeah. why we still kept the uh, Honolulu power plant in, in mothball, so to speak, here on Oahu, because until we're absolutely certain that we can meet the needs of all our customers, we're not going to give up a, a facility like that. You need to have a fallback. So, so uh, let's absolutely. go, let's go to Lanai for a minute. Um, sure. So there's some action on Lanai. We saw something in the newspaper about uh, negotiations yeah. between Larry Ellison, the owner of Lanai, uh, and Hawaiian Electric uh, for, I guess, uh, his his wish to acquire uh, utility assets that service uh, that area. Very, very right. interesting. Can you talk about it? Well, uh, there's. I can tell you what we. I can tell you. I can tell you what we know. Uh, you know, going back historically, first of all. Uh, the that uh, electric facility was not always owned by Hawaiian Electric or Maui Electric. It was originally owned by Castle and Cook, going back to the, the plantation days, the uh, the pineapple plantation days, and then uh, Murdoch took over the uh, well, actually Dole 
Dole Foods to go really back into, into ancient history. And then uh, David Murdoch bought uh, the island and Castle and Cook took over the island and they uh, owned it. And eventually it was transitioned to be part of Maori Electric Company, part of the Hawaiian Electric family. Uh, so, you know, everything old is new again. And now the owners of the island are looking to, uh, you know, looking at the possibility, and I would say, of, of reacquiring that. And I want to say, first of all, this is in the very early stages of negotiation. I know that Pulama Lanai wanted to get the word out and they wanted, you know, the people of Lanai who are either their employees or not their employees, but uh, about 3,000 people there uh, who are very, you know, sensitive, as we know from recent history, to what happens on their island. Uh, they're going to be out in the community talking to them about this and uh, trying to convince them that it's a good idea. Uh, and I'm sure they'll encounter some questions at least and maybe more. And it's going to have to be negotiated in a way that we, we still have a responsibility to the people who are our customers today uh, to make sure the, that the deal is good. And then it's going to have to go to the Public Utilities Commission. And as you know, uh, the commission has not always uh, looked fondly on, on outside ownership. Uh, this may be a different kind of situation. I don't know. It'll depend on what the details are in the, in the, in the discussion. But um, it's, it's an interesting development. There's a lot of interesting things are happening on Lanai. Uh, it could be uh, you know, a very interesting model of sustainability and uh, kind of a high-end model, to be very frank. They've got two beautiful, uh, luxurious resorts over there that are a little bit out of my price range. Uh, but, you know, the, the, there's a market for, and they're doing a lot of other things on Lanai to be more sustainable. They already took over the water company over there, which, of course, is a critical piece of infrastructure. So I think this was part of, of their overall plan. But uh, a couple of months ago, or in the last month or two, we put out a, a request for proposals for more renewable energy for Lanai and for Molokai following the earlier one that we put out for the for the other islands. And when when Palamo and I looked at that, they thought, well, you know, why should shouldn't we be doing that? Shouldn't we be the ones seeking the renewable energy for this our island, which they do own 98% of. So uh, and it, it you know it, it, in a way it makes sense. They own the land. If somebody else wants to come in there and do a renewable energy project, they're going to end up having to deal with Palamo and I at some stage anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so they said, well, rather than Hawaiian Electric uh, and Maui Electric uh, operations going through that process, we should we should take charge of that process and make sure that whatever happens fits in with our own plans, which are, uh, as I said, very grand and very, very forward looking, uh, I believe. So uh, they came to us and said, uh, you know, let's talk. And we said, yeah, that makes sense. Let's negotiate. We're not we haven't made a we haven't got a deal. We haven't made a commitment. We have no idea, as I said, how the Public Utilities Commission will feel about it. But, uh, you know, the more things change, the more they say the same. As yeah, said, and this is an interesting change. You're talking about yeah. changes here. We're talking about a year in which changes will, will happen and are happening and who knows what Absolutely. will follow. I mean, and you have so many renewable projects out, out there. I think right. uh, that's also a major change. We're moving ahead with greater greater speed, alacrity uh, toward renewables, and that's very that's encouraging. Amazing. So the, the question I put to you, though, is, um, you know, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Electric uh, is changing its name. Can you talk about that? And what does that mean sure. in, in a larger sense? Well, it, what it means is perhaps more symbolic than for most customers than, than you know, substantial. Uh, the, the Maui Electric Company, Hawaii Electric Light Company have been part of the Hawaiian Electric uh, family have been subsidiaries of Hawaiian Electric for many years. Uh, and we've gone through a process internally, mostly, uh, over the last five or six years in which we've tried to create one company. Uh, in, in, the, in the bad old days, we used to, every, each of the three companies used to order their own trucks and order their own vehicles. And we ended up sometimes with, with one kind of truck on this island and one kind of truck on that island, which made it kind of inconvenient for you know, us to be working together. That's just one of many examples. So now we have a unified uh, fleet 
It's got a fleet manager who, as it happens, lives in Hilo, but he manages the, the fleet for the entire company, for one company. He manage, and if, if we buy things, we buy things that work on all the islands. So uh, if we buy a new kind of bucket truck or we just got 30 new Kia electric vehicles uh, that uh, we'll, we'll be using them on all the islands and we'll have the parts and we'll be able to service them and, and we'll have all the, the benefits that come from buying a bigger number of vehicles than we would if each company went and tried to negotiate their own deal. We have tons of examples of that. We're saving money on Xeroxing just because we're able to negotiate a contract I don't know if we call it Xeroxing anymore. Is it uh, uh, electronic copying, I guess. Fair enough. We, we, we've got, now we, we have a contract that covers all the, all of the, com the company on all five islands and we get a better deal for that. And we're saving, you know, we're, I hope we're also copying fewer documents because that's, kill that's a lot of trees. But in any case, we are making sure that we're getting the best possible deal and that goes ultimately to the bottom line for our customers. Uh, and because uh, you, as you know, I mean, we're, we're limited on how much profit we can make by the Public Utilities Commission. They, they watch us very closely and they say, you can only earn up to this amount. People think we got some kind of a guaranteed income. We got a guaranteed cap. And uh, so this kind of, these kinds of savings, ultimately they accrue to the benefit of customers sure. because we can be more efficient we can do more with the money that they send us to to provide electricity. Yeah, economies so, of scale. Yeah, exactly. So this is a kind of a symbolic uh, thing. You know, many companies rebrand themselves. We've changed our logo. We changed our logo just five or six years ago. We, you know, this uh, we got a Sig, Sig Zane logo five or six years ago, and and all, all of this is part of the process of saying this is a Hawaiian electric company. Uh, Hawaiian Electric, actually. We're not going to use companies so much anymore. This is Hawaiian Electric. We serve the Big Island. We serve Maui, Molokai, Lanai. We serve Oahu, different operations on those islands. But, uh, you know, you could be answering the phone or calling the company tomorrow and you might get somebody in Hilo uh, at the call That's center great. there. Who says, sure, I'll That's take care of you. I'll approach. help you out. You know, a lot of people exactly. have been calling you that anyway, Peter, for some time. It's, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the direct approach, if you will, which is good. Uh, one other point before we run, and we only have a minute left, uh, is yeah. on Friday, uh, uh, Scott Sue, among others, are, uh, is speaking at the uh, legislative briefing by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Peter Russick, Absolutely. spokesman for Hawaiian Electric. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you, Jan. Congratulations on your new studio. Thank you. Aloha. Uh